Folks, welcome to this week's Bible study. I want to try to put together a teaching on the rise and fall of America in a Christian nation, if I could. And, and I'm trying to do it in an hour. I can't obviously can't cover it all, but I'll do our best. In today's history books and in today's society, it has been believed and accepted that America was never founded a Christian nation. Is that true? That's right. We, we, according to the leaders in this country today, we were never found a Christian nation. Multicultural. Multicultural, multicultural yes. Yeah. Everyone was right, nobody's wrong. Everybody could come to America, no matter what they believed, and be, and be uh, absorbed into the society, and everything would be just hunky dory. That's what you're teaching. Is that not true? That's it's true. It's created just by a bunch of derelicts. Exactly. It's, created, uh, it's founded by a bunch of, uh, of power hungry uh, whatever, our, four, they call them, our forefathers, and they were, all, they were all heathens, and no doubt some of them were. I'm going to read some things a minute to prove to you a lot of them weren't. But nonetheless, the, 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 the Christian culture itself has to be undermined before a nation can be destroyed. The, elite, the leaders of the world, and you'll hear this from Lindsay Williams CDs if you listen to them, said that they have to, that, that they, they are, that is what they call themselves. Now listen, they call themselves the devil's messiah. Before they can destroy America, they have to destroy America's God, or the belief in his God, in his God. And they have done a very good job of that. Am I telling the truth so far? Mm -hmm. In Psalm chapter 33, in verse 12, what do you say, Phil Blake? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Now let's break that down to the day, 2011. Blessed is the nation. Does it specify which nation? Can it be any nation that serves God? Right. And those he has chosen... Did he choose us? Does the Bible say he chooses us? Yeah. Does it say that? Many are called, but few are what? Chosen. What do I do about that if I don't like it? Nothing. If we're chosen by these people, then bless the nation that, 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 that he is a God of. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4. I hear a few, few scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. Feel who's up? Oh, you're not there yet, are you? I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. He said, If thou wilt, if thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me, and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then thou then shalt thou remain, then shalt, then shalt thou not remove, and thou shalt swear. The Lord liveth in truth and judgment and righteous, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and him him shall they glory. Now he said nations. Does he mean all nations, just a few that he thinks ought to obey him? Is his law to be universal or just all nations? All nations. Any comments so far? Proverbs chapter 14. Set up a little bit of a scriptural foundation to share something with you. Proverbs 14. Phil who you would read verse 34. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now to further my point, righteousness exalts which nation? Any nation. Any nation. But sin is a reproach to what? Any people. Any people. Disgrace. Black, white, red, or yellow. Make a difference, Phil Blake? Oh. Nope, small, none. Small people, big people. Is, is, is our God respect your persons? No. no. No, he's not. So no one can say, well, because you're white or because you're black. No, no, or because you call yourself a Jew. That's not it no more. He, he blesses those who obey him, curses those who don't. Is that fair enough so far? Yeah. All right. I want to read to you, may I read to you some quotes? If you don't have this book that I suggest you get, we have a military ministry. I don't know what they cost uh, our cost is. I have no idea. I don't want the effect between. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But these are very well done, put together by 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 uh, Daryl Daryl yeah. Everhart of Pennsylvania. A I just read. Book. Huh? A wonderful. Book. It's a good book. It's absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary. It has quotes of our founding fathers and quotes of New World Order leaders too. In the alphabetical order. In alphabetical order. That's where they are. This is the General Court of Connecticut in 1639. Now I, I'm telling. Now listen, I am not saying. That all the founding documents in the 1800s, 1700s were all, quote, Christian. I'm talking about here from the very beginnings of, of this country was first founded by the Pilgrims and Puritans from over here, okay? This was a general court of Connecticut that God's word should be the only rule 
for ordering the affairs of government in this commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Was that a Christian statement? Mm -hmm. You know that the legislatures in, in those times, they had legislatures, they elected people, were not there to make laws by men. They were there to make sure that God's laws were enforced. Mm -hmm. They didn't legislate. They didn't well, say anything like that. They couldn't. <coughs> no, no Webster's Public servants. No Webster's Dictionary, the first American dictionary of the English language, had six or seven thousand references to the Bible. So Absolutely. They yeah. were using the Bible as the uh, standard for definitions for words. How many of you ever heard of Patrick Henry? Great guy. Listen to what Patrick Henry said. Now, either, either this guy was a complete fool a complete moron. And he's lying when he says this. Or he is what he says he was and he means what he said. I think I'll choose the latter. It cannot be emphasized too often or too strongly that this great nation was, now listen to me, was founded not by religionists, not by multicultural societies, not by freedom of religions, but by Christians not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. <clears throat> Is that pretty clear so far? No, but I, well, but now, President Obama says we were never a Christian nation, you know. That absolute black moron to be hung. He's a traitor. He's a liar. He's a, he's a bogus piece of trash. Now, I don't care who hears that. I don't back up on that. I don't care if black or white, he's a traitor. George Bush was a traitor. Bill Clinton was a traitor. Yeah. Am I telling the truth, like it or not? Even Reagan was. Yeah, even Reagan was. There's no point, folks, listen. If I don't tell the truth, I'm guilty of the, of the evil, and I will not back down on that. What are they going to do, kill me? Kill me, I'm out of here, I'm finished. You can't scare me with that. Let's go, let's go to another quote here. This is by John Jay, the first Supreme Court Justice, Supreme Court, Supreme Court, Supreme Justice. John Jay. Providence, and who is Providence? Who is the one who calls us Providence? The Almighty God, right? Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers. Now pay attention to what he said. And it is a duty, as it is a duty, as well as a privilege and the interest of a Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. Mm -hmm. He said in 1816, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, I think, he said you're to choose from your brethren as rulers, not from the heathen, not from the one who promises the handouts and the benefits, but from those who are your true brethren. May I suggest that the people in the White House for the last several decades have not been my brethren. They're not Christians. Let's go a little further here. Worse than that, they haven't been just atheists. They've been uh, worshiping the dark side. Oh, absolutely. You know, with their seances and everything else. Noah Webster. And if you do not have a, a, a copy of Noah Webster's 1820 dictionary, you don't have a dictionary. Is that right, Phil? The best one there is. It's the best one there is. You have the Bill of Ministry also. So are you trying to sell something? No, I'm not. I'm trying to tell you how you can use. We also have 611 King James Bibles. We have strong concordance. Why? Because you need those to study. When I sit down and do my Bible studies, folks, dictionary, concordance, and, and, and sometimes a, a Greek and a Hebrew lexicon right beside me. Why did I do that? Because I want to know what I'm reading. If I don't understand it, why I read it? No one has a perfect command of the English. No, they do not. We don't even speak English anymore. When the word gay becomes sodomy, something off the language. Mm -hmm. Now listen to what Noah said. The Christian religion is the most important and one of the first things in which all children under a free government ought to be instructed. Mm -hmm. No truth is more evident to my mind than that the Christian religion must be the basis of any government intended to, to secure the rights and privileges of, of a free people. The opinion and human reason left without the cons constant control of divine laws and commands will preserve a just, will preserve a just administration Secure freedom and other other rights. Restrain men from violations of laws and in, 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 in the constitutions, and give duration to a popular government <coughs> is an, is as chimeral or as, as, as impossible as the most extravagant ideas that ever uh, that 
at the end of the head of a maniac. In other words, without the laws of God, the nation was insane. It's all sane. I, I didn't say that. I didn't write that. <coughs> this is written by men who helped found this country. So I could read lots and lots more if I had time. But I don't have time. I could go through dozens of quotations, and this book doesn't hold in nearly all of them. Yeah, and prove to you that we were that we were founded as a Christian republic. Something happened. Over the years, as the evil men won wars, physical wars, the war between the states, they won court wars in the so-called courts of the land. As they won more and more, they changed the laws or they changed the writings of history to teach their opinions of what, how this nation was formed. No one, pro at least in the beginning, they knew they were lying. They knew they were lying. What, what, what's a lie to a heathen? It's a means to the end. The means justifies the means. Exactly. So, so whoever <laughs> wins the wars, quote, gets to write the, the right history book. <laughs> now, I, I, I can spend a lot more time on that, and I wish I could have more time. If, if you want to know how this Christian is found, then now you go on the internet, type in what's the American Christian nation. Mm -hmm. You'll get pages and pages of both pro and con. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what the writers say. I want to go back to the source. I want to go back to the ones you started and see what they said it was. Because it's not my opinion that matters. Well, yeah, right there, you see what happened. Okay, this is Madoff Hitler. Do you really believe the masses will be Christian again? Nonsense. Never again. That tale is finished. No one will listen to it, listen to it again. But we can hasten matters. The Parsons will dig their own graves. They will betray their own God, uh, their God to us. They will betray anything for the sake of their miserable jobs and incomes. Good point. Yeah. Amen. That's it. In, and that's I know it. in history, I, think, I can't remember who it was, but the quote went something like this. Those who control the present control the past. Those who control the past control the future. <clears throat> now, we read already some quotes of scriptures about how a nation will be blessed. I'm going to read to you now, if you would, a couple more scriptures. I won't get into the meat of the, of the teaching today. Psalms chapter 9. We're going to have time, I hope, for some comments on this. I don't want to uh, uh, hog all this. I want comments from, from the people listening, too. There's not many of us here today. Matter of fact, it never is. You know why there's never many people come here or Somerville? Because I'm too radical for them. But I ask this, and I want this, I want to be judged, judged by these people uh, honestly and openly. And I ask this question, if anybody listens, take, am I preaching anything that's not Bible? <laughs> am I teaching anything that's not history? So why, so why are you afraid of me? They want to be part of the masses and not part of the remnant. Well, that, yeah, it's, it's called... Uh, Ignorance is blessed. Absolutely. It's called truth phobics. Yeah. Truth phobia. Yeah. Truth phobia. That's what it is. They're scared to death of the truth. In Psalms chapter 9, <clears throat> Bobby, read verse 17 to us. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot, forget God. The wicked shall be turned into what? Hell. In all what? Nations. All nations? Does that, does that mean America too? Mm -hmm. Bill Blake? Does that mean America too? God, God judges people fair and square. All, all nations. All equal. All nations that forget God turn into hell. Now I'll make one impressive point again. I've many times before. No so word forget. If they didn't know him, they couldn't forget him. <laughs> so when you forget him, your judgment's more severe than if you never knew him. You don't believe me? Check out Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Destroyed in seconds. And, and Lot turned her back. Yes. She knew better. She knew better. And Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed in a matter of seconds. Jerusalem took two years to die. They're eating their own children. Mm -hmm. Eating their own dung. A, 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 a thimble full of... A, a, Pigeon dung sold for I'll pay how many pieces of silver. <laughs> they were judged much more severely than some of them. The judgment was great. They all both went to the same place. But when God judges his people, his judgment on them will be much more severe than those who never knew him. Why do you think Christ says, Greater is your damnation to the Pharisees? Of course, on the positive side, he says, uh, to, to, to 
uh, well, to whom much is given, much is required. But in other words, if you do a lot, you get a lot. You know, in mm. other words, he rewards you and commensurate with with what you ever you do. If, if you're faithful in little things, he'll make you really great things. Yeah. So I see it. Bad reward for good. But you look at the Pharisees, the ones who had the law, right? They said they are the ones who told to preserve the law. He said, "Greater is your damnation." You know it, and you still don't obey it. But we wouldn't be guilty of that, would we? None of us would be guilty of breaking his laws, knowingly, would we? Of course not. Those are hypocrites, the ones who once knew. Let's go to Psalms chapter 2. Now, <clears throat> why would any group of people, we were founded at at once, we, we were one time at least built up on the principles of Christianity. Is that agreed upon in this, fe in this fellowship? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yes, it is. We were one time built up on the Ten Commandments, upon the laws of Almighty God. That murder was a sin worthy of death, right? So was uh, rape or uh, sodomy. sodomy or adultery. Probably These were all, oh yeah. yeah. They're all capital crimes. And if a thief was caught stealing, he wasn't put in prison. There were no prisons in Jerusalem, in Israel. A thief was not put in jail. He was fined two or three times, but seven times what he stole. And if he didn't pay it back, then he's put to death. They didn't need prisons. The laws of God are fair and strict. If you stole $30, you had to pay back maybe $90. Or maybe $210. I don't know, whatever the, they decided. And if you stole that and did not pay it back and you were caught running, you were put to death. Why do you think I did the crime in, in, in Israel? No repeat. I'm going to show you in a minute why, why this is. You see, we become, the church today becomes so soft that we would never judge. Oh, God forbid I'd carry a gun on my hip just like this preacher here is doing today. God forbid this be here on, on my side. I can't do that. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I would never harm a I'd never harm a fly. I can't help if somebody murdered unborn babies and, and the sodomites are, are, are raping the children in schools and so I, I can't do anything about it. I'm a Christian. I got to obey all my from granddaughter. I won't bother you. No. I mean I would told him my deacons in a church, they break in my home and kill my wife and kids. I ain't told me it's face to face. It's God's will and I ain't gonna stop it. That's exactly right. Hey, won't tell me that. So what I'm trying to say is this. We have become a people that's so good with a false sense of what's good we that we're useless in battle. Stink. We're useless in life, period. We're rotten. Mm -hmm. Made themselves rotten. Exactly. But why would mankind as a whole desire to throw off the laws of God? Because that gives them an excuse to do the same thing. They want to live like hell and call themselves good. Yep. Hmm? Just in my case. Psalms chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 1. <laughs> Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? What's that saying is this. Why do the people imagine they can overthrow my laws? It's vanity. It's vain. I mean, the New World Order and the, and the, and the Pharisees and the, and the disciples of Satan think they can overthrow God's laws and live their life the way they want to. And some of them don't even know they're serving Satan. They think they're doing everything for themselves, but it's the same scenario. They're serving Satan but serving themselves. You follow what I'm saying? It's either Christian or satanic. It can't be either way. It cannot be either way. It's either Christian, Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslim, that's all satanic. Anything without other than the laws of the true God are of Satan. Has he undermined societies with religions? Has Satan, now let me ask a question again. Has Satan under, undermined all society by religions? I didn't say Christianity. I said religions. In the, in the, mid, in the mid Ages, when, uh, when the medieval age, we call when, what do you call them? The, uh, the dark, ages. Right. dark Ages, thank you. Uh, when the Catholic Church ruled the world, the people were kept in darkness because they didn't have the Word of God in it. In, what they could understand is written in Latin. Only the priests could read the word of God, and they got, they said what they wanted to say. And they sold to the people in indulgences. In other words, then if you give me a thousand dollars, you can be adultery tonight. No problem. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. They sold and sold indulgence. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sin. <clears throat> peddled sin. They peddled sin. And, and so the so the Pope and his his uh, his other his followers, his priests, 
carnal can, can do what they want to with the laws of God and change them because no one can read it. Now, why? Now, is, is that Satan ruling by religion? Is it or is it not? Totally. But the man that changed that is eventually got put to death. Absolutely, he did. And that's the cost of doing what's right sometimes. Yep. That's Christ. Yes, but Satan undermines men with religion. Now, let me make another point here. This is important. It was ruled by our Supreme Court that America is now a humanist nation. Also ruled by the same Supreme Court that humanism is a religion. Has Satan used religion to undermine America? Mm -hmm. False religion. It's religion. Well, all the Supreme Court, Supreme Court Muslims in it. Well, no, well, no, no there's no, Jews and Catholics. And, and, yeah. No Christians. No, no, no Protestants. Protestants. We've got Obamaism. So understand this, folks. This is nothing new. The heathen rages. And imagine a vain thing that they're going to rule without the restraints of God one day. And they're going to for a little while, seems like anyway. They're going to say, the kings of the earth set themselves. In other words, they get, they get themselves, we'll say armies, and set themselves up as great men. And the rulers take counsel together against who? The Lord. Now look at that. The rulers take counsel against the Almighty Yahweh God. They take counsel against him. The foolish is a man that think we can build, build our own army big enough that we can overpower God Almighty. Who was the first one to perpetrate that lie in heaven and get kicked out of heaven for it? Who was the first one? Satan. He, he had in one third of the angels of creation follow him. Right, Phil Blake? Yes. Now listen to me. Now listen, this is important. If he can deceive the very angels that stood before God Almighty to follow him, what can he do with people? I figured that one out by myself. Uh -huh. Imagine that. And here we sit thinking that we know everything and we're just perfectly all right because we're Americans or whatever. Satan has used the same, <coughs> same ideas and we have all taken counsel. <coughs> get, now let me make a point is even the churches today have taken counsel against the laws of God. When you have a Christian organization, like what they call themselves the Methodists, the Church of Christ, some Baptists, others, who say that sodomy is okay, or they be preachers and everything else? Uh, is, is that against the laws of God? No. When you bring up the book, that's just... Exactly. You're not, you're not lost. You're not lost. Are they picking counsel against the laws of God? Sure. Are they cops of the church? So do the Pharisees, though. Isn't this good? Oh, it's amazing how, how, how we went from this to this. It's all written out for us. It says, I take the uh, counsel against the Lord and against his anointed. His anointed being Christ, of course, among all. And how about anointing ones like the disciples? Mm -hmm. How about Martin Luther? How about John Wycliffe? How about all the reformers that took counsel against them? Don't what to them? What did they do they to them? them? Some of them they they killed them. They killed them. Low tide and let the water come up. They did. And they mowed some of the, the they, they some high oil. They burned them at the stake. They cast their ashes in the so rivers. In the they dug up, the, dug up their bones and burned their bones. Yeah, they were pretty vindictive. <clears throat> They really were. That's a Catholic church. The, the Pope had, had a, right, his enemy uh, dug up and burnt bones. They, they, that's right, he did. I think it was another Pope. And, and sprinkled them in, in the, was it was the Rhine? No, 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 the one in uh, France. Oh, the river in France. Same. Same. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the writer said that signified that that would just spread the gospel that much more. <laughs> okay? Now listen. And let us look what the saying. Talk about us, the anointed. Let us break their bands asunder. I don't want to hear about thou should not kill, thou should not steal. I'm going to break those bands. I don't like it. I'm going to live my life where I, I, I go around once, I'm going to go for the gusto, man. If it feels good, I'm going to do it. Don't want to let it lie. You ever heard that? I want to be free of God. Uh, yeah, I want, I want to be free and do whatever I want to. I don't want to be strange to me, not knowing the fools don't even know that they're getting further into, into, into damnation and, and into slavery because they become slavery of their own passions. Mm -hmm. That's good teaching, I feel like. I'll tell you in case you forgot it was. Anyway. <laughs> if somebody says I'm an adult, I'll do, do what I want. Do what? I'm an adult. I'll do what I want. Exactly. Get along together. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. We don't want these laws binding us and telling us what we can and can't do. It's my body as a woman. If I want to kill that baby inside me, that's okay. Has that not been said? It's my body. Even though there's an individual, an individual inside of me, a, a real live individual, I can kill if I want to. It's my body. Isn't it strange how these laws work? 
They can cure their babies, feel the doc, but they, but they can't do drugs. It's their body. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Anybody comments, please break, chime right on in here. And best I suggest this to you, to you. Now listen, I'm going to tell you. Listen, I'm going to tell you. Listen, I'm going to tell you. Every time you give a dime, one penny, to these organizations, whether it be UNICEF, the UN, mm-hmm. or be a Methodist church, or anyone else, even our government, I tell you, I promise before you ever give it. Every time you donate a dime to them, you're undermining the laws of God. And you're, a part, you're a part of that evil. Paying for your demise. And I might tell them the truth so far. Mm-hmm. As for breaking the bands, I would tighten them more, even uh, you know, to uh, not allow adultery. I mean, not to that people should not commit <clears throat> adultery. Not that I want to be a Sure, I understand. Not that I want to be a policeman and keep everybody from it. It's just that... It's the laws of God. It's the laws you speak of God. You speak the law of land. It should not be done, and it eliminates a lot of the controversy over abortion. No, family matter. Well, we, I talked to a... I don't want to use the name on tape necessarily. Everybody listening probably going to talk about To a head of a radio communication network here a couple months ago who put a sodomite on your network. I upset me a little bit, and I told him so. I said, either he goes or I go, and I haven't changed my mind on that. I'm just working on something else right now to get off the air and do my own thing, so to speak. But nonetheless, he said, I want, I want, I want, I want to stick with the First Amendment list. And I said, this has nothing to do with the First Amendment. Being a sodomite has nothing to do with the First Amendment. It's morality. It was illegal 20 years ago, 30 years ago. 50 years ago, they put in jail. Before that, in the, in the 1800s, they put to death. So, seeing as how our minds have been changed about this, doesn't make any more moral or any more right, does it? Has nothing to do with the First Amendment. Has to do with, with, with morality and God's laws. Adultery, fornication. What other laws are we going to ignore because it's First Amendment issues? Mm-hmm. Or any other issue? Our First Amendment was not given to us to commit sin. No. It's a license. Was it? They're using it as a license. To sure. Sin. Pornography was not an issue back in the 1700s. It wouldn't be allowed. It was about change times and laws. Sure. Yeah. And it used to be in this, this country, a woman or a man could be arrested to go down the street scantily clad. They broke laws of, of decent, uh, indecent exposure. And I've got to say this for everybody in here. Lynn Hudock, have you ever seen girls today who aren't dressed decent, even in school? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you say anything to them, you can't get in trouble, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> you know that experience, huh? So this is what it is today. Let us break their bands asunder. And it said that he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. derision. Ha! Look around today. Are we in derision? Is he laughing at us? Look what they think they're going to do. And look at look at the look at the outcome of their sin. Look look at the confusion <laughs> and frustration and anger and what other words can you use to describe what's going on with the whole world, especially in America? The people in America are totally, well, help me with the words. Uh, they're th- confused is a good word. Pathetic. Pathetic, that's true too. So they said, I'll laugh at them. I know it's hard for us to believe right now, look down and laugh at this, this nation. Actually, the whole world, I'm sure. But in America, look what I give them, look what they are now. He's laughing at us. He said, I'll just give them to derision. I'll give them to, to, to a reprobate mind and do what they want to. Is it happening? It's so 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 obvious to those who want to see it. They're Go making ahead. rulings that are really messing themselves up. They are. Financially, yes, they are. socially, the workload keeps getting heavier instead of uh, being uh, lightened as they implement their ideas. Now let's uh, look at the scripture. I want us to. This is hard. I've been programmed like everybody else has been programmed. <coughs> I can show you this in the Bible at least a different place. I'm going to show you one. So it has a main cover. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Look with me. May I ask you this question before we get further? People say, well, preacher, you're talking about the Old Testament. Well, let me ask you this question. Then go on. Why were the Pharisees, oh, I'm sorry, why were the prop the, the disciples? In the New Te- now, New Testament. Was Paul in the New Testament times? Mm-hmm. Peter, John, Luke. Why were they all killed? Why were they all martyred? <clears throat> they wouldn't keep their mouth shut. 
Did they speak up against evil? Mm-hmm. Did they not? They taught the old no, The world did not want the ban. They so. did not. John the Baptist looked at Harry and said, "You had your brother's wife. That's adultery. It can't happen. You're breaking the laws of God." What happened? What happened to John the Baptist? Spit on a platter. Spit on a platter. And how did he? How did the king get it? Why did he give it to this woman? Because, because his wife's kid. daughter, his wife's yeah. daughter, danced in front of him. Scandalous. Scandalous. Clad would say, perhaps, and very seductively, he said, "I'll give you anything you want, but half my kingdom." Now his own wife's daughter. And she said, I want, she said, I want your mommy. He said, what do you want? He said, tell, tell me what John the Baptist said about it. Now, my question is this. If these men of God, and women of God too, women, <clears throat> if they had enough courage to speak up and say this evil is worthy of death, what is our duty today as disciples? Not even different. <coughs> Has God changed his mind on the sin since then? Nope. Is the doctrine all of a sudden okay? I mean, has y'all looked down and said, well, I can't stop it. I'm going to let it go ahead and just excuse this sin. Does he do that? Does God excuse sin? He says, shout out, no. Fair no. He, he, he can forgive sin. He'll never excuse it. So as I read to you, I do Romans chapter 13, understand that many, many men have been martyred for trying to instill righteous government and taking a stand against evil. And I want to say this very slowly. Because of our effeminate Demeanors today. I said ours. Please read First Corinthians chapter seven, verse nine, six, verse nine, and read about being effeminate. Now, this doesn't mean that we're sodomites. That is not saying at all. It's the same verse, a different term. Effeminate means that we become soft against sin. We become womanish. We become uh, complacent, non-aggressive, apathetic. apathetic. All these things can be determined. Look it up in your look it up in your 18 tradition. Look up the word effeminate and see what it means. The, the men who become effeminate are not going to be part of the kingdom of God. God help me not to become effeminate. Soft, fearful, not ruling timid, the household. Exactly. And and proclaim the truth all around me. In love, yes, but proclaim the truth nonetheless. When I, when I sit down and talk to some of my family, and I'm going to mention names again, 20 years old, beautiful young lady who's shacking up with a boyfriend, not married, and their parents call themselves Christians, so they see. When I sit across the table, Nick, and I try to talk to her, is that because I hate her? No. Why would I try to talk to her? Why would I try to t- teach her about Why would I tell her to sin? Why would I do that? Keep her from dying and going to hell. Going to hell. And keeping the children doing the same thing. I was in the hospital just a couple days ago. Dad was there. The hospital, in Somerville, and a lady sitting there in the corner. I, and her, her dad was in there because he got he got uh, frostbite on his feet back in the Korean War, and he cured it somehow himself. And the day said, "I'll come out and get you one day." He's 80 years old, and his feet are falling off now. It took that long, but it actually came out and got him. But her do- her boyfriend's girlfriend was there getting a, a sonogram on a baby. Not married. No shame. No shame. I said, I asked her, I said, what happened to her? You used to get married first. She looked at me and said, I don't know. She knew it was wrong, but she didn't say anything about it. Now, does she love her son and the girl so much that she's afraid to say anything? Is that love? Or would love say you all need to get married with this? You follow the point on that? Now, look at chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Now, if anything is taught contrary to the laws of God, that we should obey any laws other than his laws, is that idolatry? Mm-hmm. Is it? It is. Now, if I don't like that part of the Bible, should I just ignore it and tell it it doesn't make any difference today? Well, most churches do. Because we're all guilty of it. We're all idolaters. That doesn't mean that we had repented and been born again, but we're born into it. And our judgment will be part of this. You obey this, that part change. of the Bible that's going to get you in trouble with the law. Do, do what? Obey that part oh, of the Bible yes. that's going to get you in trouble with the law. Now so listen I'd what the... Prefer, I'd prefer to be in compliance with all laws that are not in conflict with God's law. There you go. Yeah. A righteous government. But yeah. you don't find me of those anymore. Taking your, taking your earnings before you get it, that's in conflict with God's laws. Mm-hmm. Taxing your property, you got conflict with God's laws. Making a driver's license, travel, let's get a conflict with God's laws. All these things are idolatry. (coughs) 
Man rules in affairs of sovereignty, and he can't let that happen. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, aborted babies, sodomy in schools and the military, all contrary to God's laws. So anyway, <clears throat> when the sin was silenced, it's, it's sin. Whether it's, you know, it's going to pick up, it's still part of the sin. And listen to what the Lord God said. Now listen to what the Lord God said, not what I say, what the Bible says. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. Roosevelt said, Let us begin social security so we may take care of the people. Let us put back money, their money, and save it for them so that one day they can retire on it. Did he mean that? Did they, did they actually put the money back in a trust fund? Is the money there? No. They used it for other things. They lied. They lied. So what did the people do in America? They put their trust in man to provide for them, save the money for them. Instead of having us discipline in God and what's right to do it yourself and put the trust in man to do this for them. That's idolatry. When he said, well, and they went on beyond that and said, well, let us now begin something for them called Medicaid, Medicare. That we, we must take care of them. Uh, there are subjects from the, from the time they're born to the time they die. We're going to see they have something to eat, a place to sleep. And, and they're going to put our trust in us so we can pass more laws and we can owe them even more. But they won't bite their hand and feed them. Is this true or not? It's idolatry. I'm guilty. Yep. It's changing times and laws. They violated their own constitution. They did. The pursuit of happiness, not the guarantee. Now listen to this. <clears throat> no matter who, now listen, this is important. Why did we keep electing people to office who promised more handouts? Did our God not say that he would provide all our needs according to his riches in heaven? And, glory? Mm -hmm. and in the Old Testament, did he not say that I'll provide for you as you travel across the wilderness? Did he not say that? Where did the people keep saying they want to go back to? Egypt. Why? Flesh box. Be taken care of. They, they were guaranteed a place to sleep and, and, and buy tea. In the, in the desert, they couldn't see it. They couldn't touch it. They couldn't feel it until God provided for them. They didn't, want, they didn't walk by faith. They wouldn't walk by tangible goods. But we're not guilty of that, are we? We're not guilty of that. Oh, no, not us. And the politicians that, that uh, promised all of that was just was buying votes. Absolutely. It says, Let us go after the gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. In 1776, who in the United States was drawing food stamps? Nobody. For Social Security? Nobody. For Medicaid? Nobody. Why did they fight a battle for liberty then? Because a hand that was controlled control them didn't feed them. Why wouldn't people fight today? Because the hands feed them. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's pretty simple, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not hearken unto them. But we did, didn't we? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. He did, what, what's the word proveth mean? Try. He tries you. Listen. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. He tried us many times in this country. He tried us in the 1920s. tried us in the 1930s. He tried us in, uh, before and after that many, many times. He tried us with, with, the, with, the, with the murder of unborn babies. He tried us with, 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 the, with the murder of Randy Weaver. He tried us with Waco. He tried us with this, 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 this. How many tests have passed so far? Yeah. Are the trials getting more severe each time? This is what the Bible says, not what Butch Paul says. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. Oh, but preacher, if I do that, they'll put me in jail. They'll take my stuff and I'll never get out of there forever. And they may even put me, kill me. What did the Lord God say? We're, we're supposed to reverence and fear who? Him or him? The man can destroy the body and soul. And keep his commandments. I wonder if Psalms 24, verse 11 and 12 really means what, uh, what it says. Or what is it Proverbs? By the way, Proverbs 24, verse 11 and 12. It says that if you know they're killing innocent people and you don't defend them, the blood's in your hand. What if you meant that? Proverbs 24, 11, 11 and 12. 12. Well, what, what if you meant that? Well, just write, just fill the page. Right, they meant that? Surely not. Anyway. And obey his voice, and you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet... Or that dreamer of dreams should be put to death. 
because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Stop. Pause. Egypt is a term for bondage and slavery. He brought us out of the land of Egypt in, seven, in the 1700s to a nation of some of a, of, a, of a republic that was based on liberty. Is that, is that not true? True. Is that not true? Yes, true. Under common law. He, he brought you out by his power. And our forefathers even wrote that, but the divine promise only we won that battle. He redeemed you out of the house of, of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. What do we do? We didn't put it out from the midst of it. We embraced it. He promised a free ride. Man promised us a free ride, man. If I work long enough, I can retire. And I'm guilty. I draw social security. Yes, it is. We didn't kill them. We left them to office. <laughs> now, Phil, who doc, what did I do with that? Do I just ignore it and act like it ain't there? Can't do that. Our forefathers told us what they gave us. Mm -hmm. They warned us. Benjamin Franklin told a lady one time, said, what kind of government do we have? A republic if you can keep it. Satan plies and tempts us at the weakest points. And a man's all men that's, that have a common weakness is called, what we think is called security. Social security, Medicaid security, this is security. It's not the godly security, but we call security. We think it's something for us. For, you know, we can go, it's ours for every cause. Man promised it. Go ahead, Phil. I was just thinking, what's interesting is that back then there was a foundation. The foundation hadn't been destroyed. So you could take a man like Benjamin Franklin, who was a member of the Hellfire Club and everything. He was, you know, he, he was, he had some real problems. And yet he was still able to uh, have moral do basis. some good things. Yeah, to have even though, basis. you know, he, he was like half and half, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You know, but because of the foundations, uh, he, he couldn't. He would not have been able to be, to be uh, totally immoral and evil. He, no. he was. He was. He'd be an outcast. and knew about it. Right. They probably killed him. But you know this. This that's a good point because even in the 1950s, I remember those. Do you feel black men 50s? Yes. Like the 1950s, girls wore dresses to school. Mm -hmm. Boys had to wear the shirts tucked in, the collars down. There was a, and had to have a haircut and all that stuff. And there was a moral basis and foundation. You remember it, don't you? Lynn's going. <laughs> uh, but you, you remember all that stuff and what happened then. You remember that, mm -hmm. okay? It was it was it was un, inconceivable that somebody would teach a school dick that would, would come out and say I'm, I'm gay and I'm proud of it. They was they would have stoned that person. And they might not have been a good Christian, but they were going by. They were going by moral values. Yeah, moral values. values. Right. Expected to. Right. The girls with boots was covered up, and the boys yes. about with pants were pulled up. Exactly. They, they they were expected to by society. Society demanded to do it. In 1960, one of the Beatles said, we're more popular than Jesus Christ. And every nation, every station, and this every radio station quit playing the Beatles music. You remember that? The day they cursing, laughed, mocked, filthy, and believed, and they played every day in the cult music. A culture can be, can, one way you can determine a good a culture is about music. By the mm -hmm. cult music. Okay? Okay, it's art. Yeah, it's art. Well, we're we're playing at the theater. A little bit further here. Verse 6. Listen to what it says. Mm -hmm. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is, a, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Name of the gods of the people, which are round about you, nigh unto you, or far off from thee. From the one end of the earth, and even to the other end of the earth. What's he saying? Any false god, anyone in the world, if anyone in your family, your family, your, your brother, your sister, your wife, anyone, husband, entices you. What does the word entice mean? I want to draw you into it. Seduce. Seduce. Did, did, I don't want me to pick a fight here, but did, did Eve seduce Adam a little bit? Ow. That's the best word to do. Only woman on earth. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> the original sin we still haven't figured it out. Yeah. In verse 8, thou shalt... Well, what, what was President of the United States? He said, we got an idea. We're going to start Social Security. 
All we have to fear is fear of sin. Uh -huh, yeah, that was Rosie. Yep. Now let's start social security so we can guarantee you when you get to be 65, you've got something to live with. Is it falling apart now? Mm-hmm. It's destined to. All man's promises fall apart. They're playing that way. Exactly. If the politician draws up the own social security as well as they expected us to, they may not fall apart. Is it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Namely, the gods of the people, which are in verse 8, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him. In other words, you just said they're, they're getting what they get what they get what they deserve. Yeah. You see, oh, we can't do that. We're Christians. We've got to pity them all. What does the Bible say? Well, we're supposed to pray for righteousness. Since when does our opinion matter? Since when does our opinion matter? If God's law and word says it, that should be our opinion. Mm -hmm. Any other opinion contrary to that is sin. That is easy. Yes, is. Neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely take him in unto the church. What's it say? Kill him. Thine hands shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards the land of hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Dang it, I can figure that out. Why can't you? It's treason against the laws of God. And all Israel, or all America, all shall hear and fear. Now let me ask a point here. All of you listen to me. Look at me, everybody. Pay attention a minute. Let everybody look at me a second. Ask a question. You with me, feel like? You still there? Listen. I'll listen. Listen. It's important. Why did you used to have hangings on, 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 the, on the square in the, in the front of the courthouse? As an example. Mm -hmm. What? As an example of what? For what? Murder, you don't do it. You mm -hmm. don't murder, you don't murder, you don't rape. Why would you hang them in the court, front of the courthouse? So all people would see mm -hmm. and fear. It will not be that sin. But now that we're wiser in God, we never do that anymore, do we? Here's the beginning of wisdom. We'll put them in prison a couple of years, maybe 10 years, turn them loose on society again. We have in West Virginia, I forget how many thousand child molesters walking all around us. The list on the internet, you can find them. Mm -hmm. A child molester is incurable. Oh, I won't say incurable. Christ can maybe cure, but, but on his own, he's incurable. It's a, it's a disease, a devil they can't get rid of on his own. Well, and yet they're allowed to walk among us after, after they raped and, and murdered children. They're still allowed to walk among us. The more they walk around, the more laws they can break, the more laws they can pass. Exactly. Um, Lent saw an article in the paper, something about somebody's proposing a bill that all life sent, all people are sentenced to life imprisonment should be up for parole after three years. This was in the inter Elkins Intermountain. Can you imagine that? They call it life imprisonment. And you get, you get longer than that if you three years. You get longer than that, it takes your dog start to death. And think of this. Nobody has a problem with uh, uh, execution for treason against the country. No. But they'll, they'll, treason against God's no problem. Sure, no problem at all. And my question, I want to ask this question too. Now, I want you, folks, see, I'm, you, you're starting to think a little bit in the hearse, don't you? This is going to get you everything you want to talk. I know it is. This is going to get you everything you heard in the Seventh Day Adventist Church and the Christian Church, Baptist Church. I've been, all, I've been all of them, some all of them. And this goes clear against the grain that you've been taught all your life. Why would they. Is there money involved in prisons? Big buck. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest industries in the United States. It's the fastest growing industry in the United States is prison system. Bigger than Walmart. So why would they not want to have these people put to death who are worthy of death? Money. They get money coming in. Thousands of dollars per prisoner. I can't remember exactly. Fifty thousand dollars a year per prisoner. Prison industries. It is industry. It is industry. It is industry. The biggest. The biggest. Right. Thing. The love of money still what? Mm -hmm. It takes more money to keep them in prison for one year than what I'm making one year. It says personally. Oh yeah, a whole lot more. Not only are they making money off of them, they're they're stealing your money to keep the person. Absolutely, you'll pay. We'll pay it twice. Mm -hmm. You know. And all Israel shall hear. Or all the people should hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this among you. That's just one sin. You'll find the same thing about a murderer, about a, about a, about a sodomite. It's all, in, it's all in your Bible. The same law, the same penalty, and thou shalt not pity him. Bestiality, same thing. 
Why do we see evil multiplying? Two reasons. First off, the powers that run the world want to multiply to cause chaos. Uh -huh. Secondly, the people love to have it so. Read Jeremiah chapter 5, the last few verses. You'll find out that the people love to have it so. That's why the Christians today don't want to be severe. They don't want to judge. They don't want to be the ones who cast stones. Well, we can't do that. That's against Christianity. It is not against Christianity. He, Christ said, be careful because you'll be judged by the same standard. Judge by the same standard. Judge me by the same standard. I'm not teaching false gods. Judge me by the same standard. I'm not a side of light. Judge me. I'm not a murderer. Judge me. By their fruit, you shall know them. Judge my fruit. If I have any fruit, this God be given the praise for it. But I am not a murderer, a rapist, or a liar. Or a thief. I'm a lot of things. Though I'm an idiot sometimes. I'm a moron sometimes. But it's, I'm trying to be a righteous moron anyway. I'm not afraid of being judged the same standard. Judge me as a drunkard. Judge me as whatever. A, a doctor. You can find sin in there and prove it. Then by all means, judge me. But until then, shut your mouth and do what's right. Is that fair enough? In closing, back to Psalm chapter 2. Oh, my blood pressure goes up. Psalm chapter 2. There's a warning in Psalm 2, of course. I want to read to, I want to, read to you verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, heathen nations, heathen people, for thy inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dice them with, through, in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and endorse the trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Individuals and nations can be redeemed and only by repentance, a turn around from an evil, and back to the laws of God. We are redeemed only by His grace. Mm -hmm. May I suggest this in closing again too? That no one and no one I could preach for everybody. If I could speak to everyone in the world, there's not one person feel black who deserves salvation. Not one. Not one. Not one of us has ever earned it. Even if, even if you could be perfect from the day you received Christ, from that time on, you had to earn it, you still don't make it because you had to see before you knew Christ. It's going to take his part. Exactly. There's no way out of this except through him. As an individual or as a people, it's only through Christ. Our forefathers said it. we got to say it and live it. Don't just say it. Mouth service is cheap. Show me, your, show me your faith by your works, James said, right? Not by your mouth. If we will stand up for the truth as best we can, expose evil, yes, we may be like the disciples, you may be martyred, you may be put in prison. You won't be the first, you won't be the last. But your duty as a Christian is to speak up. The chains that bound us down, the chains of tyranny, the chains, of, the chains that we forge ourselves, I'm just going to watch that movie Scrooge. Oh, yeah, a long time ago. Remember Scrooge? He said, I, I'm bound by the chains I forged my life, through my life. Remember that fraternity? <laughs> yeah. We have forged our own chains, Bobby. Our own chains we've allowed to be forged on us. And we've asked for some of them. Give me, give me, give me. Well, I'll give you, but there's a chain, there's a bit to it. I don't care, give me. We've forged our own chains, and on, in this earth, I'm convinced, we'll never break them all. We'll never break them all. It's impossible, too far in the hole. But by the grace of God, by His Spirit, we can be redeemed, forgiven for that, and break some at least with the Spirit and soul. Our physical body may be, may be damned forever as far as being killed and martyred, but our soul and spirit are His and can't be touched. Is that not worth it? By His grace. When you look in the mirror, how many of y'all look in the mirror sometimes and think, who is that old man or old woman? It's getting more that way every day. <laughs> I, I want you to know that from the time you're born, you're destined to die. And that, that's uh, blasphemy for those that think that they can extend their lives forever. It sure. says one, every man is appointed to die. Wants to die, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, yep. it, it's from the time you're born, you don't, you, 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 your time to die is already been preset. It's in the Bible. It's going to happen, all right? Whether you live to be 10, 50, or 100, you're dying every day. 
Why would you, and nothing wrong with trying to take care of your body. It's a temple, it's a temple of the Holy Spirit. Treat it good. That's what you're supposed to do. But why would you deny your soul to preserve your flesh? No comparison. No comparison. Why would you deny God's laws to preserve your flesh? Mm -hmm. We've all done it. May God forgive us. And he has. Well, let's walk in him now and tell the truth for his glory. And he'll do the rest. He bless our children. See you next time. I had a dream the other night that, well, I didn't understand. A figure walked in through the mist with a flintlock in his hand. His clothes were torn and dirty as he stood there by my bed. He took off his three-cornered hat and speaking low to me, he said, we fought a revolution to secure our liberty. We wrote the Constitution as a shield from tyranny. For future generations, this legacy we gave. In this, the land of the free and home of the brave. The freedoms we secured for you, we hoped you'd always keep. But tyrants labored endlessly while your parents were asleep. Your freedom's gone, your courage lost, you're no more than a slave. In this, the land of the free and home of the brave. You buy permits to travel and permits to own a gun, permits to start a business or to build a place for one. On land that you believe you own, you pay a yearly rent, although you have no voice in saying how the money's spent. Your children must attend a school that doesn't educate, and your Christian values can't be taught according to the state. You read about the current news in a regulated press, and you pay a tax you do not owe to please the IRS. Your money is no longer made of silver nor of gold. You trade your wealth for paper so your life can be controlled. You pay for crimes that make our nation turn from God and shame. You've taken Satan's number. You've traded in your name. You've given government control to those who do you harm so they could burn down churches and seize the family farm and keep our country deep in debt. Put men of God in jail. Harass your fellow countrymen while corrupted courts prevail. Your public servants don't uphold the solemn oaths they've sworn. And your daughters visit doctors so their children won't be born. Your leaders send artillery and guns to foreign shores and send your sons to slaughter fighting other people's wars. Can you regain the freedoms for which we fought and died? Or don't you have the courage or the faith to stand with pride? And are there no more values for which you'll fight to save? Or do you wish your children to live in fear and be a slave? Oh, sons of the Republic, arise, take a stand, defend the Constitution, the supreme law of the land. Preserve our great republic and each God-given right. And pray to God to keep the torch of freedom burning bright. As I awoke, he'd vanished in the mist from whence he came. His words were true. We are not free, but we have ourselves to blame. For even now as tyrants trample each God-given right, we only watch and tremble, too afraid to stand and fight. If he stood by your bedside in a dream while you were asleep, and wondered what remains of the freedoms he'd fought to keep. What would be your answer if he called out from the grave? Is this still the land of the free and home of the brave? God bless you, and God bless this republic. <laughs>